empower me. Wow. Wisdom over wounds. February 24th. The delight of sacrifice. I will very gladly spend and be spent for your souls. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 15. Once the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, we deliberately begin to identify ourselves with Jesus Christ's interests and purposes in our lives. That's found in Romans chapter 5, verse 5. And Jesus has an interest in every individual person. We have no right in Christian service to be guided by our own interests and desires. In fact, this is one of the greatest tests of our relationship with Jesus Christ. The delight of sacrifice is that I lay down my life for my friend, Jesus. That's found in John chapter 15, verse 13. I don't throw my life away, but I willingly and deliberately lay it down for him and his interest in other people. And I do this for no cause or purpose of my own. Paul spent his life for only one purpose, that he might win people to Jesus Christ. Paul was attracted, and he always attracted people to his Lord, but never to himself. He said, I have become all things to all men that I might by all means save some. I need to read that again. That's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 22. He says, I have become all things to all men that I might by all means save some. Have you become all things to all men? Are you interested in that you might by any means and all of the means save some? He didn't say save all. He said save some. All things to all men. When someone thinks that to develop a holy life he must always be alone with God. He is no longer of any use to others. This is like putting himself on a pedestal and isolating himself from the rest of society. Paul was a holy person. But wherever he went, Jesus Christ was always allowed to help himself to his life. Will you let God help himself to your life? Go ahead, God. Take a bit of my life. Take a lot of my life. Take all of my life. Surrender. Surrendered life. Many of us are interested only in our own goals. And the world today is goal-focused. And goal promoting. We're only interested in our own goals. And Jesus cannot help himself to our lives. But if we are totally surrendered to him, we have no goals of our own to serve. Paul said that he knew how to be a doormat. I discussed that in the previous message. He knew how to be a doormat to lay himself down. Without resenting it. Many people will lay their lives down. But they really resent the fact. That they have to lay their lives down for the Lord. He did not resent it. Because the motivation of his life. Was his devotion to Jesus. We tend to be devoted. Not to Jesus Christ. But to the things which allow us. More spiritual freedom. Then total surrender to him would allow. Did you hear what I just said? 
We're devoted to freedom. Freedom. Spiritual freedom. If we want spiritual freedom. Then what total surrender to God would allow us. Freedom was not Paul's motive at all. In fact, he stated, I could wish that I myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren. All of this was for his brethren. Romans chapter 9, verse 3. That's just not talking about men. It's talking about men and women when we say brethren. Had Paul lost his ability to reason? Some of us today would say he had lost his ability to reason. If he was supposed to sacrifice and lay his life down for foreigners, woohoo, for people we don't know, woohoo, for folks we don't like, for folks that don't look like us, Paul said, I could wish that I myself were accursed from Christ for my brother. You can find that in Romans Romans chapter 9, verse 3. Paul had not lost his ability to reason. Not at all. For someone who is in love, this is not an overstatement. And Paul was in love with Jesus Christ. Wow. What a simple word. Are you in love with Jesus Christ? This topic today is the delight of sacrifice. Paul says, I will very gladly spend and be spent for your soul. Again, found in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 15. It says, what a simple statement it is. Here in 2 Corinthians that reflects a somber commitment to say to other people, I will gladly happily most gladly spend my life for your soul. Be spent like God use my life however you want for the good of these other souls. He said, Lord, use my life for other souls souls. If I can do anything for others, we are too selfish in our service to God. We're only worried about me, me, my, my, and I. What a picture of commitment to say. My life is not ultimately about me. I am living for the glory of God and specifically for the glory of God and others. I want to spend my life for the good of others. For the eternal good of others. I want my life to be spent by God for that purpose. Are you spending your life for the good of the souls of others? God, give us a desire to spend our lives for the good of others. Just like 2 Corinthians 12, 15 described. I ask you today, is that your posture? How are you standing for God? What are you standing on? Why are you standing on it? So many times I find people only saying, I'm standing on the promises of God. They're only standing for what they can get from God. Not what they can give to God, but what they can get from God. G-E-T. People today are selfish. You find the scriptures show that we are supposed to care about others. We are supposed to care about not just the homeless and the hungry. We're supposed to care for foreigners as well. This is a sad subject today that I heard somebody come on and say that our country was full. And that is not true. We have plenty of room. Just drive a couple of blocks from your house and get on the freeway. You'll find nothing but land. Nothing but resources. But we are selfish. We are selfish. Even as believers, we are selfish. 
People are fleeing from other countries. I'm not saying one country. From other countries because they are being killed. Their families are being destroyed. Their livelihoods are nothing. And no matter what anybody says, the United States is the land of the plenty. And we have rules. And we have laws that must be followed. But we can't just in the name of God shut our arms down to people who are in distress. We find our own Savior, Jesus Christ. The angel of the Lord had to come to Mary and Joseph and tell him, get him up out of Egypt. Out of, out of where he was, That never mind, and go to Egypt. He had to go to a bigger place, a wealthier place, a place where he could be hidden from destruction, preserved and kept. God has people in all these countries. You better be careful because the word of God says, touch not mine anointed and do my promise no harm. There are people that are coming across from other countries that are spirit filled, that are powerhouses, that God has commanded them to leave where they are and get up and go. We've been talking about that. Don't stay here where you are. Get up and go. I had a get up and go experience also. Some years back, God said, don't sit here and die. Get up and go. I had no idea where I was going to go and what I was going to do. But I know specifically God spoke to me because I was weeping and crying in sorrow. I was crying to the destruction of my soul. And God said, get up and go. I will guide you. I will lead you. I will protect you. Many of these people are fleeing from death and destruction. And God is not happy with the response. You have your wonderful cars and homes and luxury and food. And you'll let a baby die tangled up in some barbed, barbed wire. Instead of helping them get to the proper place. You'll ship them off to another city that they don't know. They're coming from a southern border or, or eastern border. Different weather temperatures. You'll send them over in the ice with rags on. God forbid you call yourself a servant of the Lord. God forbid you act in selfishness. You will wake up one day and find out you have nothing. Just as quick as you rose to the top. God can allow you to fall like Jesus said, I saw Lucifer when he fell from heaven. He said, I saw him fall like lightning. Just as soon as he got himself elevated and high enough to think that he was all that, that he could challenge God. We have people today that are so filthy rich and so uppity and snooty. We also have good people that are filthy rich. We like to say filthy rich, but Blessed and rich by the Lord. And just as humble, you would never even know that they had the kind of reserves that they do. And they love God and they are yielded to God and they are sacrificed their life to the Lord. You can tell the difference between a person who has sacrificed their life to the Lord versus those who have sacrificed themselves to the church or those who are following after a pastor or a missionary or those who are following after fame and claim to a name. You can tell the difference. God has people, as he told the prophets, he said, that have never bowed their knees to Baal or to, uh, to an unbeliever. They have never bowed to the devil. God has people reserved. He said, I always have a remnant. I have a group that's left over. When you think that all of the believers, the saints of God, the true worshipers have bowed down, God said, I always have a remnant. R-E-M-N-A-N-T. I have someone that's left over that has never bowed their name, their bodies. They've never yielded to the enemy. They've stood strong. Standing. What is your posture? What are you standing on? What are you trusting in? God says he uses those people who have 
humble themselves before him. When you think about the people around you in your sphere of influence, are you spending your life for the good of their souls? I think if we were not careful, we could get so caught up in the busyness of life and just getting all the things done that we need to get done, that we don't take time to stop and say, how can I spend my life today for the good of souls around me? How can you look outside of your close arena and see who might need help? God needs you. You are his hands. You are his feet. You are his eyes. You are his voice. To my friends, my family, my loved ones, my co-workers, my acquaintances, can you take time today and say, God, spend me. S-P-E-N-D. God, spend me. Make my life spent today. For the good of the souls around me. God, please teach us to live like this. God, give us, we pray, yes, ultimately a focus on you. But then flowing from this, a desire to spend our lives for others' good. Not just for your own good, but for others' good. God, please. Help us to spend our lives for the good of people in our family. Some of you don't even like your family. You hate your family. Search out your families. Go and help your family members for the good of people in our churches. There are people in our churches that are suffering. That's not just for the benevolent fund where you give a couple of dollars. Some people don't have gas. They don't have electricity. They don't have water. They need help and it would cost you very little of anything. Sometimes... If if you don't even have the money, you have knowledge. You have wisdom to give. You have something that God has placed inside of you to give. I remember back in the day in one of my um, church organizations as missionaries and overseer missionaries. I had some ladies in there that looked like they could do absolutely nothing. I had searched and watched them over the years to see what assignment I could give them to work with us in our district fellowship and around the cities and stuff like that, but I could find nothing. I managed to get several of them in different positions and and places and stuff because they wanted to do something in the kingdom of God, but there was one young lady who couldn't do anything. I could not figure out. She couldn't spell, she couldn't read, she couldn't write. What in the world could she do? And I finally sat down, talked people. Get in their head. Find out what they like to do. I found out that she was a cake maker. And I'm saying C-A-K-E. She could make the best cake. The most fabulous cake. The most beautiful cake. And God gave me something for her to do. To seek out the seniors. The women and the men in our fellowship who don't have a lot of family members. And people are gone on and they're all by themselves. Get their addresses. Get their phone numbers. And she became the person in charge of our birthdays. Make sure the senior citizens get a cake from the ministry to show that we love them. We support it with money to buy gifts for them. To give them a special day to encourage them. I'm telling you, you can do some things so much more greater than that. But she was glorious in that. The first day I told her, you're going to have the microphone. I want you to introduce the people. And you should have seen that person. That woman, she showed up and she was beautiful. She had her information together. She had the people together. And it was a glorious beautiful thing that the seniors talked about over and over again because they didn't expect anyone to remember that. Now I had a full plate and so I gave that I said now whatever you need let me know I'll help you with it but I need you to take this on and she took this on and I'm trying to tell you we have people that can do things that you would be surprised one gentleman, I had no idea what he could do. He couldn't get himself together. 
But you talking about a carpenter. The man had been taught. He was a perfectionist. He could fix anything just about. Anything. You see, you have people that are around you. If you don't reach out and find out who they are, you don't know what they can do. You don't know who they are. And many times, both of these individuals that I just described to you were very depressed. Very sad. Lack of confidence. The gentleman, he wasn't very fluent. He was from the country. He was an American. But he had a speech impediment. And he was embarrassed all the time. When I'd seen He'd just be standing there, just staring. He wouldn't say anything. God told me to ask him a question. You know, you need to ask some people a question. Just a simple question like, are you all right? Do you need anything? Don't be afraid to sacrifice something that you have. I remember years ago having not that much, but I remember my husband came in and he said, I found a family. They don't have anything. Can we take them some food, Barbara? And God moved on me. I cleaned out all of my cabinets. I had a turkey that had been left over. Turkey and all the stuff that God said, a person can't cook a turkey. They can't cook too much of anything. The only thing you really need is salt and pepper. Sent this food, boxes of food. Took out of the cabinets and sent them with children food. They were extremely happy. And then it came time for dinner time for us to make us something. We're like, well, what are we going to eat for dinner? And then I was like, oh, we took everything away. And at that time, didn't have a whole lot of money ourselves. But we were givers, givers, givers. Be a giver. I'm not talking about just giving an offering at church. Be a giver to people. Be a giver to life. And, and we went and sat down and thought, well, what in the world are we going to do now? We didn't mean to give them everything, but in our heart we did. We were giving and we were joyful. And God gave me a little simple instruction. I'm sharing this for somebody on here today. He gave me a simple instruction. I was sitting there and I was like, well, I don't have a whole lot of money to do anything. And I felt the unction to clean out a drawer that was right next to my bed. You know, just about everybody has a junk drawer. I'm just talking because this is for somebody. And I didn't have a lot of money at the time. And I was like, well, what are we going to buy or get ourselves for dinner? And it looked a little hopeless there. But we were still were joyful. We had helped somebody else. So I just started cleaning out this drawer that had just, we would just throw everything in the dresser. It was just everything miscellaneous went in that drawer. Miscellaneous, miscellaneous, everything. We knew to look in that drawer. I wasn't looking for anything, but I started going through. Took a trash can. Go, it's time to clean out this drawer. Took a trash can. Was throwing stuff. I, it was May. I'll never forget this. Came across a Christmas card. And I looked at it and I thought, oh, this is an old Christmas card. And I knew who it was from, but I, went, I threw it in the trash. And, and it had not been opened, but Christmas to May, I was like, oh, it's just somebody said, I said, oh, well, thank you, Merry Christmas. Threw it in the trash can. Kept working on it. I got an unction. I mean, let me tell you, unction is a push or a move or a spoken thing in your inner man that said, take that card out. Take that card out. You know, the word of God says the Holy Spirit speaks in a small, still voice. Learn to listen to the voice of the Lord. You make a sacrifice, God is going to bless you. I took it out and I set it on the dresser and I looked at it and I thought, this is Christmas. Let me open this up and see. Maybe they left a message. When I opened it up, money fell out. It may not be much to you, but a hundred dollar bill fell at that time. You could still send out, send money in the envelope. A hundred dollar bill fell out of that envelope. And I began to just praise God and give God things. The money was in the trash. can. Do you know that the word of God said, man, consider your ways? He said, because you work and your money it's going in your pocket and your pocket has holes in it because you refuse to consider your ways. That means your money is slipping away and you get to the end of the month and don't know why you don't have enough. 
You've been sent a blessing and throw it in the trash can. Some things are set aside for such a time as this. I believe that envelope slipped over into the drawer and it was there and God knew it was there for just a time like this. I don't know if you found money in your pockets, money in your purse. Money, we're not even really talking about just money, but most of us equate blessings with money or finances. Right now, whoever you are, I'm hearing the Lord again say, consider your ways. What is it that you're standing on? Are you standing on just getting money? Are you standing on doing things for the Lord that would please the Lord? Like feeding the little bitty family without really thinking about yourself. But before the night was up. God had provided for us. God is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Wherever you are, even in a season of hardship, God had me going through a season of hardship. And the word of God that he gave me that Paul said in whatever state I find myself in, I learn to be content. Can you be content in the state that the Lord has allowed you to be in? I didn't say cost. I said allowed you to be in. He said learn. I learned so much. I learned so much. Learn not to complain. Learn to be thankful. Learn to be holy. Learn to be free. No matter what condition you find yourself in. Spend time with the Lord. God, please teach us to live like this. God, give us, we pray, a focus on you. God, please help us to spend our lives for the good of people in our atmosphere. God, please help us to spend our lives for your eternal good. And show us if you're leading us to do that and cause us to do what you ask us to do. Not just in the future amongst remote people, but cause us to do this today, Father. Lord, we pray that you would transform our perspective. Perform, transform our perspective on our lives. That we might gladly, not begrudgingly, not because we have to, but because we want to. Because we love others. And ultimately, Lord, we love you. Help us to be gladly spent today for the good of souls around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, we give you glory. We give you praise for this word again today, the delight of sacrifice. 2 Corinthians 12, 15. Father, we thank you so much. We thank you that you are helping us on a day-to-day -day basis. You are helping us to be free. And then you're helping us to learn how to surrender. Can God help himself to your life today? I'm hearing that in my spirit. Can God help himself to your life today? Will you opt for freedom? Or will you opt for surrender? To the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for complete surrender to you today. So as I so often say, I don't come on here to make anybody happy, holler, shout, or dance. But I come to give you what thus said the Lord. What God has given me today for you, whoever you are. Change your mind. Take a stand 
for righteousness, being in right standing with God. So if any of these podcasts are blessing you, they're found on most podcast channel under Wisdom Over Wounds. Empower me. Empower me, Lord. Give me strength. Also playing simultaneously is one of my other podcasts called The Drill Sergeant Series. Making Jewels. The Word of God says, I believe it's in Malachi, God says, they shall be mine, said the Lord. When I come to gather my jewels, and I'm saying J-E-W-E-L-S, God considers you his jewels. If you like, please share this on a, a subscription channel like YouTube or some of the other channels. It would truly bless me. You may send me a message or a emoticon or a happy face. But if you decide to send me a message, please don't send anything dirty, nasty, or disrespectful. I am a married woman. Please do not disrespect my husband, Reginald. If you do, I promise you, I will not reply to you. But as we're closing today, go with God. Let God lead you. Walk in the delight of sacrifice to the Lord. Be gladly spent for other souls, not just for your own. And remember today, I truly love you. God bless you. This is Sister Barbara. Bye.